Please be seated. Is Janicia Brown here today? No? Okay, well then I have a Bible for her. And uh, so I can either give it to mom and dad or I can give it to uh, her next week if you guys are going to be here. And uh, it's a very lovely Bible, very pink. It's got little flowers and everything all over it. Uh, Janicia was baptized at the Lincoln Avenue Church of Christ back on uh, July 16th. I don't know if dad did it or grandpa or grandpa did it. So, or the minister. <laughs> so anyway, we were uh, rejoiced with that. Um, hey, I don't know what I'm doing up here again. You know, I keep volunteering for this thing, and uh, I told my wife, I said, this is the last time I'm doing this. Back, back in July, uh, I'm sorry, back in June 25th, I preached a sermon on, is the devil really real? And I, uh, you know, we established very firmly that not only is the devil real, but he's trying to devour you, and he's trying to, de to devour me. So the reason I want to do this again, this is the follow-up lesson about God's protection. If we look at Ephesians 6, it talks about the whole armor of God. And there's six pieces of, of armor that are described there by Paul. So, is this the latest fashion with Walmart or, <laughs> or Target, Amazon? I kind of like the little red outfit up here in the top right. So, is this the latest attire? I don't think so. What this is, is the Christian arsenal. These are some of the items that Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, uses as an analogy, as a spiritual truth that, that he wants to teach. So, uh, so I hope you uh, enjoy the lesson, and I hope you bear with me today. I love this image. This is the Lion of Judah. And uh, the uh, title that I gave today is The Full Armor of God. So let's go ahead and get into our text, Ephesians 6, 10 through 19. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. This is not about you and me against each other. But against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness. And hear this, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of, of righteousness and as shoes for your feet having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all of the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel to which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. So here we have a picture of a Roman soldier back in Paul's day, ready for battle. He's got his full armor on, his full gear. And this is uh, the thing that I love about what Paul has done is he's taken, you know, he's been chained to this guy for weeks, months, studying him. And he, he takes these uh, pieces of armor and he teaches us spiritual truths from these. So here we've got the belt of truth got the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes for the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit. So these are the six areas that I'm going to be talking about today. And what I want to do is I want to kind of give you uh, the practical 
uh, warfare uh, application. Then I want to give you the spiritual application, how we apply it to our lives. So I've got defensive and offensive weapons. So Paul was very familiar with these weapons because he was actually chained, as I said, to a Roman soldier when he wrote all of this. Remember, he is a prisoner in Rome. If you look at verse 19, pray also for me that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. So imagine being chained 24 hours a day to a Roman soldier who's wearing his armor. I'm sure he spent hours and days and weeks, as I said, studying him. So when he writes the book of Ephesians and he does this section on spiritual warfare, he uses this armor to show us spiritual truths. Paul describes six pieces of armor or combat gear. Two were considered offensive weapons, the shoes and the sword. You might say the shoes, I'll explain that later. Three were considered defensive weapons, the breastplate, the shield, and the helmet. One was considered neutral, the loin belt, which actually did kind of protect another area. We won't go into that one. But in the first century, the city of Rome had one million people, but Rome ruled a hundred million people. In order to do that, they had to have a military army that was unequaled. There was one battle in the year 55 BC where Julius Caesar, with one of the greatest armies, armies in history, attacked the city with 250, I'm sorry, attacked the city with 50,000 men. He was against an army of 250,000, a quarter of a million, and the Romans won. The Romans won because their soldiers were a highly trained, disciplined, and army ready for combat. The weapons. So not only did Rome have the greatest military the world had ever seen, it also had the best equipment, the best armor, and the best weaponry the world had ever seen. So as we look at our text today, look at verse 13. Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Paul says, therefore... He's talking to Christians. He's talking to you and he's talking to me. Therefore, put on the whole armor of God, not half, not just one or two. You don't get to choose which pieces. I've got to be honest. There's been times in my life that I have not had all six pieces in place. And that's when, sa that's when Satan comes in. That's when he messes with your mind and he comes in. So we need to learn how to put on all of the uh, armor. So let's start with, uh, number one, the belt of truth and the practical military purpose. There it is. It looks like it's pretty heavy to me. Probably about, I'm going to guess, 20 pounds. This was a very important piece to the Roman soldier's armor. The Roman soldier put a very wide belt around his waist, which was the holder of a lot of equipment. There was a loop for the different swords. Other loops held rope, darts, or ration sacks. You know, they had to carry their food with them to be able to eat. The belt was tied in several places to stay in place so that no matter how the soldier moved about, fell down, climbed hills, the belt was always in place with weapons at the ready. If this belt were not on straight, then everything would be out of place for the soldier. This would cut down on his, on his efficiency and might even be able to, it might even cost him his life. So here's a spiritual warfare application. Just as the soldier had his loin belt to put on every day to keep his armor together, we must apply the Word of God to our lives on a daily basis, or we will not be able to maintain our defenses. You know, we were talking yesterday, Stu and I, about reading the Bible. I know I read the Bible through last year, and this year I decided I was going to just try to take a book of the Bible and study it a little more in depth. But, I, you know, if you just start with a verse or two every day, maybe you can build up to a chapter maybe a book, maybe you are reading the book through in a year. You need to be in the Word of God on a daily basis. Amen on that? The belt was the first thing he put on. The belt of truth is the first part of the armor listed because without truth we are lost and the schemes of the devil will surely overpower us. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, John 14, 6. 
and it is only through him that we come to God. Therefore, truth is of the most of, is of the utmost importance in the life of a Christian. Without truth, the rest of the armor would be of no use to us because we would not have the spirit of truth. So that's the foundation. It's the belt of truth, so it's our integrity. This belt we wear has to do with integrity. It's not just to have a belt. It's the belt of truth. The battle that we fight is a battle between truth and untruth, between truth and a lie. The Bible says that the devil is the father of all lies. In other words, there is no truth in the devil, no integrity in the devil. And we had a really good lesson on that back in uh, June. As a Christian in this spiritual battle we, we fight, we need to put on the belt of truth because he is going to attack you with untruth. Every one of you here at some point in time will be attacked. You better know the truth. Right? Amen? I put that in there because I want to respond. You know, I told Stu and Connie I need a cheering section there, you know. And they, so I, I, I didn't trust them. I put in my own amens there. You know, this goes way back to the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve, uh, when the devil said to them, don't listen to God, and we all know what happened. Anytime we sin, God says this, Satan says this. And we are just like Adam and Eve. Here we are, thousands of years later, and we face the very same decisions today. God comes up to you and says, trust this, read this, follow this, love this, obey this. These are God's words. It's holy, it's sacred. You need to read this, follow this. What is Satan? Satan says, don't believe that. Satan says, it's hogwash. This book is outdated. It's a man-made book. Everything in it is ridiculous. You don't need God. Just listen to our guidance. I will lead you with what you need to be doing. And here we are, right now, at this very moment, just like Adam and Eve, we have two sides. Are we going to do what God says? God says, read this and you will live. Satan says, follow me and you will live. God says, worship me with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Satan says, no, worship me. God says, die to yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. Satan says, no, no, live for yourself. You are what's most important. We listen to that sometimes, unfortunately. You see, we have the exact same battle today between the truth and the lies of Satan. And I will just say to you today that every one of us in this room has to make a decision. That's what Paul's saying here. Which are we going to do? Is God true or is Satan true? It's a battle of truth, a war with the adversary. And we are at, a, a, at war with a spiritual battle. We really are. You have to have the belt of truth buckled around you. Now we move on to the breastplate of righteousness. There it is. Lovely piece of equipment. You know, just keep in mind that back in the day they had a one piece where it wasn't very fluid. And here you see the layered leaves, not only up and down, but uh, horizontally, so they could move about. Very, uh, very ingenious. Uh, the Romans had the ideas for Roman design, which provided light, weight combined with ease of, of movement and protection from blows. This breastplate was attached to the belt by leather thongs on the bottom to keep it solidly attached. It was anchored to the belt and kind of held in place. Note the belt had to be on first, then the breastplate. One key area the breastplate protected was what? Was the heart. The heart is the one key organ responsible for sending blood through our circulatory system to keep us alive. Our spiritual lives can deaden if our hearts are not right with God. When you walk in the righteousness of God, it is a weapon of defense against all those slanderous accusations and outrageous strategies of the devil. When Paul compares the armor of God with military gear, each piece represents a part of God's strength that he extends to us when we become his children. The breastplate of righteousness refers to the righteousness, 
Righteousness purchased by us by Jesus at the cross. 2 Corinthians 5.21 As salvation, a breastplate is issued to each repentant sinner, you could say. It is specifically designed by God to protect our heart and soul from evil and deception. Our own righteous acts also are, are no match for Satan's attacks. The breastplate of righteousness has Christ's name stamped on it. It's as though he said, your righteousness isn't sufficient to protect you. Wear mine. Our protection against those attacks is righteousness or the word purity. Self-righteousness would be a weakness. That would be pride. Many people get confused when they read this. He is not talking about the righteousness that comes from God. Of course, the Bible says, He who knew not sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God. We have no righteousness without God. We all know that, right? Amen. It's all from Jesus. But what he's talking about is being fully devoted to God. He's talking about knowing the truth. You need to be fully devoted to God. You can't be out engaged in sin or disobedience and act like you're going to have victory over Satan. It's not going to happen. Now what happens? Satan is always looking for a little crack in the armor because he can get you, if he can get you to compromise even on something little, that's when he's going to wiggle in there and attack you. Someone said that sin will take you further than you ever wanted to stray. It will keep you there longer than you ever thought it would stay. And it will cost you more than you ever intended to pay. Words of wisdom. Make sure you have the breastplate of righteousness. Make sure you have a life of purity in this evil world that we live in. And we know it's evil. Now we come to the gospel of peace and our practical military purpose. There's some nice looking Nikes there. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> or like golf shoes, you know, for the golfers. Some historians credit footwear as one of the greatest reasons why the Roman army was so victorious over its enemies. I, didn't, I wouldn't have thought this. No soldier would put on a breastplate and a belt and go off to battle without his shoes, his Nikes. The Roman soldier was equipped with footwear that had spikes on the soles, which provided them a strong enough stance and balance that gave them a superior posture in battle on hills and uneven terrain, like I said, kind of like our golf shoes today. In martial arts, the stance is the most important move, and it's what is practiced first. From there, the battle stance and all manner of kicks and punches. <laughs> How many of you know martial arts in here? I, I bet you could back that up. That it's, it's all about learning from the stance. And ripping the... Oh, no, I want to get into that. <laughs> ripping the flesh. Okay, so offensively, this piece will help you to stand with your feet firmly planted on the Word of God. Everything is coming back now. Where? To the Word of God, to Jesus and stay there, unmoved by the devil's threats and lies. It will protect us when we walk through the rough places and keep us steady in the heat of battle. And I like this part. It will keep our spiritual foes where they belong, under our feet. The gospel of peace is our tranquility. Stay with me on this. This is the thing that allows us to stand in the midst of a battle where there is a warfare raging all around us. There is something a Christian has that no one else has. We have a peace and assurance, a contentment on the inside. Thank you, Lord. I know the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and I have the Holy Spirit of God in me. I know that no matter what happens in this world, no matter how much the storm rages, I've got a peace in my life that says that everything is going to be okay. How many times have I thought relied on that? Paul wrote this while he was chained up in prison. I don't see him moping about in there. Man, I can't believe that I'm serving God and I'm all locked up in here. Oh, Lord, why are you, why are you being so unfair to me? 
It didn't matter if he were shipwrecked or if they were throwing rocks at him to almost stone him to death. Every time he went into a city, he was locked up, thrown in jail. Now he's, now he's locked up and he's in jail and prison. And what does he do? He writes one of the greatest books that has ever been written. And how could he do that? He's got the peace of God in him. And that's exactly what he needed, and that's exactly what you and I need, the peace of God. Now we come to the shield of faith and our military purpose. Nicely decorated. I don't think, he, I don't think they did this in Photoshop, Stu. The Romans had a long rectangular knees-to-chin shield which protected them from arrows and spears that they could kneel behind during an, uh, an arrow barrage. I want you to see a picture in your mind of a whole group of Roman soldiers who could, who could hide behind these shields and they could advance or they could retreat and they could fend off all those fiery darts from the enemy. They could actually just cover themselves and make a, almost like a, you know, circle the wagons effect. There are people all over this room who are under attack this very moment. If Satan took a handful of arrows and shot them up into the air, they would come down on people, right? How are you going to fend off these attacks? You better have the shield of faith. Paul knew what the faith, what the shield looked like. It was about four feet tall and about two feet wide, and a soldier could hide himself behind it like a turtle. They were made out of several layers of wood, and then they would wrap it in leather, and just before they would fight, they would take the shield and they would dip it in water to make it waterproof. Very smart. When they brought it up and uh, out of the water, that wet leather wrapped around wood would help fend off the fiery darts. Well, that's what happens when you are being attacked. Satan is sending these fiery darts at you and at me. Here's our application. In verse 16, the Roman shield stands for the faith of the believer in the promises of God. The value of faith lies not in the person exercising it, but in the person in whom the faith is in. Faith is something that all people possess and use every day. Romans 10.17 tells us that faith comes through hearing the word of God. It's no mystery how it comes, folks. You have to be reading or be hearing the word of God. Knowing the Bible and the God of the Bible gives you greater faith. Remember, it is God that fights for you and along with you, and he is some awesome protection. What Paul is saying here is that when Satan attacks you, faith is going to cover all of your unprotected areas. Faith at times will be your only defense. Faith will shoot down the arrows of doubt. Satan will shoot at, at you the arrow of fear. He will shoot at you the arrow of sickness. He will shoot at you the arrow of confusion. He will shoot at you the arrow of defeat. He will shoot at you the arrow of sorrow. He will shoot at you the arrow of financial loss. He will shoot at you the arrow of unemployment. He will shoot at you the arrow of unfaithfulness. He will shoot at you the arrow of loneliness. But if you have the shield of faith, it means this. There will come a time when you are under attack and you will say, Lord, I don't understand. Why is this happening to me? I have put my faith in you, O God. There comes a time in all of our lives when you say, Why me, O God? Why is this happening to me? I know you've all been there. If you haven't, you will be. Sometimes there comes a point when there are no answers. Sorry. Sometimes there comes a point when there are no answers. The only thing you have left is your faith in God. How does a person develop faith? What does Romans 10, 17 say? Faith comes from hearing what? Faith comes from what? The Word of God. It's coming right back to the Word of God. If we're not reading daily, folks, we're not protected, okay? 
And that goes for me too. You've got to, got to hear that too. Uh, Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is sure of what we hope for. It's certain of what we cannot see. Verse 6 stresses the importance of faith. Listen to this. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. If you do not have faith, God's not pleased. Now, how do we get our faith? Reading the Word or hearing it. Right now, some of you are struggling. Right now in this room, you're hurting. Some of you at this, very moment are ser- at this very moment are searching. You're wondering how you are going to get through it all. And what you need to do is not feed your fear. You need to feed your faith. How am I going to offend, feed my faith? You need to read the Word. You read all the great stories of men and women who, who did unbelievable things through faith. And you realize no matter what you are going doing or going through, you can have faith. Great stories of faith in the Bible. Now we move on to the uh, the helmet, the helmet of salvation. This is a lovely helmet here, I'm telling you. It's got, uh, you know, the Romans had the best helmet of the ancient world. They were made of metals. Uh, the other nations used uh, cloth, wrappings, animal bones, hides. But the Romans... The helmet had a, had a chin strap, had a visor, came down to cover the back, the sides of the neck. It was a very impressive uh, piece of equipment. So what does a helmet protect? Your noodle, your brain, your head. No soldier would go into battle without his helmet, ever. A well-designed helmet will protect you from various angle, angles of attack. And the greatest battlefield, now this is very important, the greatest battlefield is your mind. This is where it all starts. Uh, I can do that, or I can think that, or I could say that. No. This is the area the enemy wants to attack the most. One key area he wants to uh, damage is our assurance of salvation. He wants to get in there and put doubt into you as to whether you're going to be going to heaven. And I love what Mick had to say today about about heaven. Um, I don't think there's going to be a big round bit up there, though, Mick. <laughs> Maybe. Paul gave some good advice in Philippians 4.8. Think about these things, brothers and sisters in Christ. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. We must be on guard on what we let run free in our minds. Satan is very subtle in these areas. He has blinded the world, and he will do the same to the unsuspecting or careless Christian. We must have a clear mind to be discerning in all situations. And this comes from immersing yourself in God's Word and prayer. The helmet of salvation. When I think of salvation, there's only one word that comes to my mind, Jesus. I don't want to go into battle without Jesus. When all else fails and the enemy attacks, you need Jesus. Maybe you have fallen for the lies and the untruths of Satan, or you have a crack in your breastplate of righteousness. And right now you're trying to live a pure life, but somehow sin has a grip on you. Or perhaps tranquility and peace have left you, and all you have left is worry and fear and doubt. And maybe today your faith seems lacking. That's supposed to back up, Al. Okay, there's one thing that remains, that is Jesus. There's only one person I know who will never leave you or forsake you. There's only one person who will never, never let you down. Only one. Amen? Amen. There's only one person who will be your knight in shining armor. His name is Jesus. Don't ever wonder. Don't ever doubt. Jesus is all you need. And if you go back and look at everything we looked at today, all this armor... It's all about Jesus. You've got the belt of truth. 
the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes for the gospel of peace, the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith. Hey, wait, we're missing one here, right? The sword of the spirit. This is an awesome piece of weaponry here. Paul spoke of one of five different Roman swords. This one was a two-edged sword with the edge turned upward. It inflicted much more damage than the other swords. Not only was it intended to kill, but it also could rip the enemy to shreds. It only needed to penetrate the enemy uh, a depth of two or three inches to mortally wound him. Another advantage of this sword is that the soldier did not have to turn his sword around to inflict damage on the enemy. He just cut it two directions. Didn't have to go uh, uh, this this way. It was seen as a very deadly and powerful weapon. Our sword of the spirit is the word of God. When Jesus was tempted by Satan in the wilderness, what did he do? He Jesus quoted his father's words and spoke them with authority. Consequently, each word was like a sword blow to Satan's head. God has given us the authority to use his words because we are ambassadors of Christ. God speaks with ultimate authority in the universe. What happens? He spoke in the universe, came into being from nothing. When we speak God's word according to his will, there is no power in the universe who can withstand it. So, in conclusion... Again, if we go back and look at everything we looked at today, all the armor, it's Jesus. The belt of truth, Jesus is the truth. The breastplate of righteousness, he alone is our righteousness. The gospel of peace, he is our peace. The shield of faith, he is our faith. The helmet of salvation, Jesus is our salvation. The sword of the Spirit, it's God's word. Salvation is found in no one else except Jesus. Paul is saying before you take up another step, you better get your armor on. I'm not going to believe the devil's lies today. I'm going to believe what God's word says. And I want to end with this one. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14.6 So if you're here today and you haven't been baptized into Christ, you don't have the full armor uh, in your... That, that's God's gift to us. So you need to be baptized into Christ to make the confession that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and you will have all of this armor at your disposal. So as we stand and sing, if there's anyone here that needs to confess Jesus, come forward.